10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'm traveling through the Milky Way galaxy somewhere in our solar system. Can you guess where? I just wish I had some light. That's better. Did you guess that I was on the moon? Then you were right! 51 years ago, a man named Neil Armstrong was the first person to set foot on our moon. Since then, astronauts have traveled to the moon five more times. You see the moon from Earth at night, but did you know that the moon doesn't make its own light? It's actually light from the sun reflecting off the surface. That's what we see. Let's take a journey through space, and I'll explain more. A solar system is a collection of planets that travel in a path, we call it an orbit, around a star. In our solar system, that star is our sun, and eight planets and one dwarf planet orbit around it. Let's check it out. We're starting with the sun. It's at the center of our solar system. It's the brightest star and the only star in our solar system. It's very hot at the sun. It provides us with heat, and light on our planet. Let's go visit our first planet, Mercury. It's the closest planet to the sun. It has asteroids and comets that hit that planet, which makes it rocky and its surface is covered in craters. Moving on to Venus, that's the second planet from the sun. It's the brightest planet. It's also the hottest planet. And even though it's second away from the sun, it has an atmosphere that holds in all of the sun's heat and makes it very, very hot. It's one of the brightest objects that you can see in your starry sky at night. And the clouds that cover Venus reflect incoming sunlight. We're going to move on to the third and, I think, most important planet, Earth. It's where we live. Its distance from the sun means it isn't too hot or too cold. It is the only known planet to have life in many different forms, such as plants and animals and people. It's also the only planet to have water in liquid form, which is necessary for life to survive. Over two-thirds of our surface is covered in water. Mars is called the Red Planet, and it has giant volcanoes on it. And there's actually some space adventures right now going on learning and discovering things about Mars. And Mars has rusty rocks that give its planet its nickname, the Red Planet. After Mars comes Jupiter. Jupiter is the biggest planet, and it's the stormiest planet in the solar system, too. It has a large red spot that's a giant storm that's bigger than Earth. The storm, all by itself, is bigger than our whole planet. After Jupiter is my favorite planet besides Earth, and it's called Saturn. Saturn is a beautiful planet that has rings around it. And the rings around it are made of ice, dust, and rock. It's really beautiful. There's lots and lots of uh, gases that make up Saturn. After Saturn is Uranus. Uranus is a blue planet and it's made up of ice crystals. And it rotates on its side. One day on this planet, lasts only 17 hours and 14 minutes. Next is 
Neptune. It's very dark and cold. It's the furthest away from our sun, and it's very, very windy on Neptune. Neptune is 57 times bigger than Earth. Can you believe it? That's really big. At the very edge of our solar system is Pluto. Pluto is considered a dwarf planet, and its surface is covered in ice. It's very, very far from the sun, so it's very, very dark. And Pluto is smaller than the Earth's moon. So that's our solar system. A star, eight planets, and a dwarf planet. It's amazing to look out and see that beyond our solar system, there are more solar systems, more stars, and more galaxies. The universe is so vast, we may never know all there is to know about it. All right, let's rock it back to Earth. I have a demonstration or two to show you. That was an exciting adventure. I would love to really go to space, but it's pretty far out and I don't think I'll ever get there, but that doesn't mean you can't someday. And when we're talking about space, we can see a lot of space through some telescopes like this one. This is a tabletop telescope. And you can probably zoom in on the moon and see it, and it's very interesting. Um, maybe a few stars, but they'll still look pretty tiny because stars are so far away. We have a bigger telescope over here, this one right here. We've taken this one outside. We've seen the moon and its craters. We've seen um, Saturn and its rings. We've seen Jupiter and its moons. So this is a very powerful telescope and it's automatic and it can use GPS to find uh, planets and stars for us. But right now I want to show you something really cool. We're going to do a little experiment. And you know at the beginning I told you that the moon doesn't have its own light. The moon doesn't make light and the moon doesn't light up. The reason that we have light on our moon is because of our sun. Our sun is our only star in our solar system. And it's very close, relatively speaking, to Earth in that it keeps us warm and provides light. And so we have um, the eight planets in our solar system and our dwarf planet, but there are over 500 solar systems in the Milky Way galaxy. And then there's even stars and who knows what beyond that. So the universe is massive and people haven't even barely begun to um, explore all that there is out there. But right now I want to show you uh, the things that I'm going to use for an experiment. And I'm going to show you why and how um, the moon looks like it has light. So I'm going to take an orange, just a plain old orange. Even looks like it has craters. It's kind of an old orange I found in the bottom of a refrigerator. A pencil, I have a globe, and we're going to have a flashlight. And I'm going to demonstrate to you how the moon orbits the earth, and as it orbits the earth and the sun shines on it, it looks like we're seeing different sizes of the moon or different shapes. So I'm going to do a little demonstration. So I'm going to have to close all these to make it dark in here, okay? So right now, the moon is between the sun and the earth, and it looks dark, like you wouldn't see it at all. And as it starts to rotate around the sun, you'll start to see the crescent. It's just a little edge of the moon lit up. We go a little bit further, a few more days later, and you see a half moon. And you can see how the moon looks like it's half lit up. And we continue on around, and about three quarters of it's lit up, and that's called a waxing gibbous moon. We come all the way around to the other side of Earth, and it looks like a full moon. It's all lit up. And then it goes for some more days, a few more days, and then it's a waning gibbous. It's about three quarters lit up, but it's on the other side. And it continues on and it becomes another half moon, and it continues on, and it becomes a crescent called a waning crescent. And then it goes all the way back around, and it's dark once more, 
and that's called a new moon. Welcome back. I have one demonstration left about the planets of our solar system, and it's about solids, liquids, and gases. Those are states of matter, and matter is the things stuff are made of, such as the surfaces of the planets. Solid has a definite shape, like this cube right here of ice, or this sphere of ice. It has a definite shape and things don't go through it. This rocket can't go through that solid. The second state of matter is liquid. Liquid is like the water you would get out of your faucet. And liquid has no shape. So if I pour this water into this square container, it looks square. But then I can pour it into this container and it looks round. So water does not have a definite shape the way that a solid does. And water, um, this rocket would either sink or float in water. And the third state of matter that we're talking about for our planets is gas. Are you ready? A gas. It's actually water vapor. So this is an experiment that you can do at home because it only uses water. This solid is water that is frozen. This right here is water that you might see out of the tap in your sink. And then the steam is water when it boils or gets extremely hot. And that vapor you see is called a gas. Well, on our planets, the first four planets are solid. Those are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Earth has solids and liquids. That's why we have water in our lakes, rivers, streams, and oceans. And then our other four planets, which are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, those are gas planets. And they have a gas cloud surrounding them. So it's not as though a rocket could land on that gas cloud. And then our dwarf planet, Pluto, it's just an ice planet. It's covered in ice. So I hope you've enjoyed learning so much about our solar system. And I hope even more that you stay curious and want to explore even further. Have a great one. Bye.